A very common question I get when building inbound agents on Vapi is how can you actually get dynamic data from an existing customer base into the voice assistant? What sounds easy in theory is not so easy when actually doing it, especially because people can barely grasp the concept of how Vapi works with static and transient based assistants. So in today's video, I'm going to provide you everything you need so that you actually can build a transient based assistant that has memory that can basically access customer information of your very own customer base and use that directly inside of the assistant we are going to build out. I have created a super advanced template for that that you can literally just download straight away from my resource hub and if you have not heard of my resource hub it is basically a platform where I'm sharing with you all of my templates prompt and anything else I create on my channel completely for free so simply head over to hub.indicradicals.com and grab your free copy so that you can follow me along on the screen without doing anything so in order to make it work with a transient based assistance there's a couple of tools that we need first one is obviously Vapi the second one is going to be Google Sheets and the third one is going to be our logic platform which is make.com which again is nothing else than a workflow automation tool that you can implement into your business to automate things that you would usually have to do manually in between services. So in other words, it is just a software that lets you automate services so that they can talk with each other instead of you doing that stuff manually. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to explain you the concept a little bit more and we just jump right over to the screen. And as you can see here, I have basically created a simple Vapi assistant. Obviously, if you don't have an account, create one please first. So you can see a screen like this and you can create an assistant by going over here and click on create assistant. And you will then be basically prompted by any kind of example that you choose. So I have started with a blank example right here, just to give you an idea of the concept and how that works. Because if you are creating an assistant, which happens here in the system prompt and the first message field, you basically have to define the information that the assistant should say for the first message and the instructions it should follow within the system prompt. The system prompt is basically like your brain where you instructed whatever it should do, where you can add additional information and also use the specific information. So if you've worked with Wapi, great. If not, whatever you put in here is basically static. So there is not a possibility of adding dynamic customer information like you know it for, from other platforms, for example. So if I would say something like first name and I would like to have some dynamic information, I cannot really define it, right? Because there are no texts whatsoever. Because this, in that case, is a static assistant that Vapi offers, and Vapi by itself doesn't have this complete dynamic tagging system that fits your specific needs. So putting something like double brackets and first, uh, double curly, or curly brackets and first name, does not work because there is no logic for that. So this still is awesome for building static assistants, which means some assistants that don't need to have any customization possibilities. But since you would probably like to have a more personalized view where you say something like the first name in the, in the welcoming message, like, hello, Yannis. So it basically knows and can address me and it probably even has some more additional information about the or the history that I had with this company whatsoever. It makes a lot of more sense to have that assistant more personalized so that it actually responds better and you get a better outcome of whatever your KPIs are at the end of a call. So for doing that, there are a lot of ways, but I'm going to provide you literally the best one you can use as of now and the, probably the simplest one as you can still use those static assistants in, in Vapi without actually working with anything about the, the JSON structure in the backend to create that whole assistant. Still, you would need a little bit of understanding for Jason, but I'm gonna guide you through everything right here on the screen so you can literally follow me along with everything I'm doing. So the first thing is obviously you need to have an assistant, right? And this is what we have here. So I have a very basic one that literally just has a system prompt that says, have a conversation about life. Obviously you would have whatever instructions you would like to give the assistant right within here. And you would also have a first message. And our goal in that case is basically to turn first of all, the first message into a more personalized one where we actually can add the name of the user. So if I would add it right here with Yannis and I would publish that, all it would do, it would basically always say my name even if someone else calls and this is not what we want. So our goal is to basically have a dynamic tag here that can say something like hello, whatever the name is, right? And in my case, like I mentioned, we are going to use two different tools for doing that. The first one is in my case, Google Sheet, which I'm just using as a database so that we can basically fetch information from specific users and we can use that inside of our automations. So in case you don't use Google, Google Sheets, you can also use Airtable, you can use your very own database or anything else that you integrate with, like CRMs and POS systems whatsoever. So if we're heading into this Google Sheet that I created right here, you can see it is extremely simple. We literally just have a phone number field, a first name field, last name field and email field because those are the values I want to work with. Obviously, if you have your own system, you might have a lot more values and you can literally use all of them directly inside of those automations. So stay tuned. Like I mentioned, since we're using Google Sheets, this is the setup I have. And I basically also optimized the prompt for the setup. So later on, if you want to have your very own setup, you probably need to change Google Sheets to something else. 
And now, since we have a Google Sheet setup ready, the next step is basically to head into make.com and actually create the automation. So like I mentioned, if you don't know make.com, all you do is you head over to make.com, which is this automation workflow site you see right here. You can create an account or log in if you already have one, and then you create a scenario down here under scenarios, and then you will find a button at the top right where you can cre create the scenario. So once you have done that, all you need to do is head over to our resource hub on the hub.integraticus.com. You will find a link to this specific specific resource under this video. So you can simply click on it and you will find a downloadable template for that make.com automation. Once you have downloaded this template, all you need to do is you need to head into your empty scenario, which doesn't look like that here yet, but all you need to do is click on those three dots down here, click on import blueprint, you click on choose file, and then you basically just upload this blueprint, which is also a JSON file, and you click on save. What this then does, it should import something that looks similar to what we see right here on the screen which is the exact template that I basically created for you. So from there, there are a couple of things we need to adjust once you've imported it, and I'm gonna guide you through each of them right now. So first one is obviously we need to set up the webhook endpoint. So you can click on those on the first element here, which is the trigger, which is basically what starts Vapi to actually request a dynamic assistant from our setup, and you will get a URL here. You simply copy that one to the clipboard, you head back into your Vapi dashboard, you go down here on your accounts to API keys and you will post the server URL right within this field, which in my case is probably the same already. So that's it. And once you have done that, you can head back over to your scenario and now head to the next part, which is the assistant ID right here. So let me just zoom in a little bit more. So the assistant ID is basically the ID of the assistant that you would like to connect to this specific call. So in my case, it would be this assistant that I created here called Lisa. You will have the ID right here. All you do is you click on it, you copy it, you click on the assistant ID field and you paste this ID right within here. You click OK and done. You do the exact same thing with the VAPI API key, which again you will find under here, API keys, private API key. This is the one that you can basically paste right into this integration field over here. Then there are a couple of more values which you don't necessarily need to adjust. Um, this is just for initiating static variables. So in case you have a static variable that you would like to use in the dynamic assistant later on, you can also add them here. Since that's probably not the case for most people, I will quickly explain you what this whole scenario do does in the first place before I actually go into the Google Sheet setup. So the goal with this is that this scenario basically allows you to use dynamic tags directly inside of the assistant of a static assistant because all that does is it takes a static assistant right within this part, it fetches that static assistant through APIs within WAPI, and then it turns it into a transient-based assistant and it returns this assistant back to the initial web webhook caller. So if I would like to go into this whole concept, it's probably very complex and I suggest you to check out my other video that I released on what WAPI actually is and how it works with transient-based assistants and static assistants. This will give you a full understanding of how you can leverage that. But for that case, I'm just gonna walk you through the setup as it's simpler. So this part here is basically where you would have your integration for your very own CRM or database, wherever you store that information. If you're using the Google Sheet that I basically have, you will also have that available inside of my resource hub. All you would do is you you would click on it and you would select here from the spreadsheets from the dynamic dropdown the spreadsheet that you basically copied or you would like to use inside of this automation if you are using the exact same fields like i do right here there is not much to change you can literally just keep it that way if you have different fields let's for example say we have another field here which we call job title we can then basically also fetch this field directly from within here by simply ma mapping this field to a new variable in the step after so Let's say we have we have job title added now, which is also available here. So in case we are fetching that information from the, basically in case a request comes in within make.com, we would get that information dynamically from that Google Sheet. And then we can basically map this job title to a new variable right over here. So to add a new variable, I'm just gonna guide you through. All you do is you go over here to this element. You're going to add a new variable. We're gonna call it job underscore title. And I'm just gonna initiate an empty string, I'm gonna click OK. And now we're just gonna map this value out here because this is where we actually fill in the actual value that this, this, that this element should have. So and as you can see here, we have now added this one to the column E. So I, all I would do is I would add the column E right here from this Google Sheet setup, which is the one from before where we basically fetch the information. And now I click on OK and we are nearly done. Now down here, we also need to fetch the value again. So we say job underscore title, if you would like to add a new one. 
we press OK. And now since we have the dynamic value available, what we would like to do is we would like to take this dynamic value and actually turn it into a tag that we can then use inside of our static assistant within WAPI. So it sounds complicated, but it is actually fairly simple. And what I mean by this is, with this setup, we have a list right here, which is a JSON that contains those dynamic tags. So what I'm going to do to explain it to you better is I'm going to copy this whole JSON right here. I head to another online tool, it's called JSON Editor Online.org. And you have basically a visual editor where you can edit a JSON. And as you can see right here, I have just pasted it. And it's, it says there are some errors, but this is because this is make.com specific functionality. And once you import it, this is going to be solved. So you don't need to be worried about that, but you can literally just use the JSON editor to adjust things. So now, since we have a new tag, all I would basically do is I would copy those last parts, including the comma up here, and I would literally just paste it again. I would change the tag to job underscore title, and I will keep this one empty because this is the one we are mapping the new job title field. So I'm gonna copy this whole thing again, head back into my scenario. I open again the dynamic text from here, I replace that whole part, now we have the job title field here. And in between the two double quotes, what I would do now is I would literally just fetch this job title field from the one that is blinking right next to it, as you can see here. So this is the one that we just recently added, which then also will have the information of the job title in case it is given, right? So I'm gonna select it, we have it now available here. And this is literally all you need to do to make this tag dynamic because as you can see here, we have one, two, three, four, five tags. And what that means in the sense of a static assistant is that we can now use those variables or those tags right within here in the static assistant we are going to build out. And this one is then automatically translated to a transient based assistant on the backend without you doing anything. And you can literally just continue editing the static assistant on Bapi without worrying about the whole complexity behind the scenes. So what I already showed you is probably already a bit more on the complex side, but I just wanted to make sure I mentioned this time on how you can actually extend those tags so you can add your very own information if you would like. Once we have done that, we can now basically use those dynamic tags inside of our assistant. And for doing that, I'm going to explain you the whole thing with the first name, because obviously this is the one we would like to make dynamic in the assistant. For doing that, I just copy the tag name right here. I head back over to our actual assistant and now we can use something really awesome. We can use uh, two square brackets and we can put that first underscore name tag in between. So we can also remove the static name and what this basically does is whenever we create this assistant, we get an inbound call for our agent. This first name tag will be replaced by either the first name or by nothing in case there's no name given. So this is something for you to remember. And I can test this whole thing with you by just publishing that. And what we are going to do now is going back to the make.com scenario. I click OK here and there's nothing else we need to adjust. So you basically don't need to adjust any of the other elements. Those, those couple here are the ones that you need to adjust to make that assistant dynamic. I'm gonna press now on save and to test this whole step, what I am doing is I basically just click here on run once. I wait for new data because I've tried it before. And all I do now is I literally just call that assistant with my actual number. And then if everything works out, we should hear the dynamic name that we basically map from within the first name field right in here. Because maybe this is also interesting to, to mention, you can see that we have first name, phone number, last name, email, and job title available here. And those are the exact same fields, sorry, that we have basically mapped right within here. So if we head to the variable over here, you can see we have the first name, last name, email, and then the job title mapped from within the Google Sheet. So again, if you have more information in your database, you can map them to those fields. You need to define the fields here. You add the field information here and you get the fields here so they are available in this part of the path. But that's enough with the theory. Let's just get into it and actually try this. So let me just give this whole assistant a call and I can hope you hear it as well. Hello Janice, this is Ava. How may I assist you today? So as you can see, it has basically my name even though I haven't even mentioned it right within here. We have a dynamic tag and now the next step is basically to actually show you that this is really dynamic. I'm gonna change my name here from Janice to let's say Ben. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing again. I just press run once, wait for new data and I call this assistant again. Hello Ben, this is Ava. How may I assist you today? So as you can see, it works very well with the phone calling itself. So we basically have the dynamic name available inside of the assistant and now you can do the exact same with the other text that we basically dynamically created. So if we head back into the text, you can see here we have first name, last name, current time, email, and the job title. So what I would do is in case I would build out an inbound agent, we would usually set some kind of instructions inside of the actual master prompt. 
So we can basically incentivize the AI that there are information available of the user and that it can use that information during the call. So for doing that, what you would basically do is in here, you would instruct the AI that it has information available. And then you can basically just define something like, let's say user details. And then within here, you can have something like first name. And by the way, what I'm using here is called Markdown, which is just a different way of interpreting or highlighting information in a more technical way so that it can be interpreted again by AI better and more optimized so you get better results overall. So right within here, I can now basically just define something like the first name tag we added over here. And I can do the exact same thing with all of the other tags that I have, right? So if I have something like the last name and then the email, you can basically mention all of them right within here. And you can then adjust those dynamic tags directly this way here. So let's just give this another try so you actually see that it also works with the system prompt. I basically added the email to the system prompt and all I'm doing now is I publish this whole thing and I'm basically giving the assistant a, another call. And if everything works out now, what we should see is we should literally be able to ask the assistant about the email address that I've added here because the email is also set inside of my email field right within the Google Sheet. So I'm going to give this whole thing a, another try. Hello, Ben. This is Ava. How may I assist you today? Hey, Ava. Can you please tell me the email address of the user? I'm sorry, but I can't assist with that. How can I help you with something else? You have the user email address available, right? Yes, I have the email address you provided earlier. However, I cannot share personal information. How else can I assist you today? Okay, can you at least tell me the last name? Sorry, but I can't help with that request. Is there something else you'd like to talk about? Well, I instructed you to tell me the user details and you have the email available, so please tell me the email address. I understand that you are asking for the email address, but I'm unable to share personal details. Is there something else you'd like to discuss or another... Well, that's great. That is different than I actually expected, but it basically just doesn't tell you the email address. I can for sure use them internally, but I'm very surprised that it actually works so well with the 4.0 version that it doesn't tell you the information straight away. So obviously for testing purposes, it's bad, but for the actual security, it's good. So I would say still a plus from my side. So while the setup works great, what it does in that case, it basically calls each inbound phone number, like whatever phone number you have within here, it would basically run through the same URL and the same URL on all the phone numbers could basically trigger that exam assistant setup. If you don't want that and you have maybe even different kind of assistants running, what you can do is you can add another module right within here called a router. And then you can set up a condition right within here where you basically check against the ID of the phone number. And if this ID of the phone number doesn't match that ID that of the phone number that you would like this assistant to be called from, you can literally just cut it out and basically just tell within the condition that this should be equal to not or, or uh, should be equal to it or not. And depending on that, either this scenario will run or you can basically choose a different path when using something like the router. Because as you can see, you can split that into different paths and I can basically then validate it against one phone number and here against another one. So I just wanted to mention that is, that is probably something that is really important for you as well. And in case you face any other issues with the setup itself, definitely make sure that if you are using a different kind of Google Sheet, that the sheet name matches and that the other values after here also match with the actual Google Sheet that you basically use to fetch the information from. So whatever you do, if you integrate a custom database or a different Airtable database or whatsoever, make sure you adjust these two sets up here because those are basically responsible for the values that you are mapping. And like I mentioned, if you would like to add more values, you would add them right within, you would define them right within here. You would map the values up here and you would fetch the values down here so they are accessible for this pathway. And that's all I got for now. I hope this video was helpful for you and I am very much looking forward to see what you build with those kind of automations. If you have anything really cool in mind, feel free to post it down below in the comments. I'm very happy to read through it. And that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching. And if you have anything else, feel free to just comment below. Thanks. Take care.